Ballooning during roundout involves properly timing the flare, but adding excessive back pressure during the roundout. This will cause the aircraft not only to level, but to gain altitude instead of smoothly touching down. The altitude gain during this error is entirely dependent upon airspeed and how quickly the pitch change occurs. The hazards of this error and the corrections are very similar to a high roundout. However, the loss in airspeed is accelerated by the excessive pitch attitude. The aircraft is not only gaining altitude, but rapidly approaching a stall. If the balloon is slight and enough airspeed remains, the pilot can maintain the pitch attitude until the aircraft starts to slowly descend and accomplish a second round out. A small amount of power application may be required to smooth the landing, but it must be immediately removed once touchdown occurs. If large power adjustments are required or too much altitude is gained, an immediate go around should be accomplished. And if you are not sure if these criteria exist, then go around. A second hazard to ballooning exists if a crosswind is present. If the pilot relaxes the controls during a balloon, it is common to also relax any crosswind corrections. This will cause the aircraft to drift dangerously out of alignment with the runway. It is critically important that during any of these situations, crosswind corrections are maintained and, as airspeed slows, control inputs increased. If there is any doubt or hesitation, you guessed it, execute an immediate go around. A bounce results from an excessive sink rate or improper attitude control during the touchdown. With a sharp impact, inertia pulls the tail of the aircraft down, increasing the wing's angle of attack. This causes the aircraft to rebound. The pilot must react carefully once the aircraft bounces to prevent the aircraft from bouncing again. Because the aircraft was in the improper attitude during touchdown, a bounce is usually exacerbated as the pilot tries to apply back pressure too late. Similar to the balloon, an aircraft that has bounced is quickly losing airspeed and has gained altitude while approaching a stall. The recovery from a slight bounce is similar and has the urgency of the balloon recovery. If the aircraft still has sufficient airspeed, the pilot can attempt to achieve the proper landing attitude. Power might be required to cushion the touchdown. The complicating factor here will be any crosswind component. The wings are forced level during the initial touchdown. Without a prompt and correct reaction, the aircraft will drift or miss a line. As the bounce progresses, the pilot needs to react to any drift and prevent the aircraft from rolling with the wind. As the aircraft slows, remember that the aerodynamic forces counteracting the crosswind will decrease unless more control input is applied. With a severe bounce, or if a strong crosswind is present, the safest procedure, once again, is to go around. Timing and proper control applications are key ingredients for a safe and effective landing. Pilots can err in both timing and control and must be ready to make corrections. With any of these faulty landings, it is critical to avoid a low altitude stall. And as I think we've really hammered home the point, an immediate go around is the safest action, but small errors can be corrected for a safe landing. And remember, once the decision to go around has been made, Continue the go-around even if the aircraft touches down for the first or second time. Develop and trust your instincts and definitely still remember to have fun and fly safe.